Hello, welcome to another Excel at the Office video. My name's Adrian and here I'm going to show you how to, in Excel, fix the default formatting that Excel um, gives your charts. Because when I uh, move my data references, um, so I start out with uh, my nice formatted blue and red um, chart bars and I've gone through the effort of formatting this. However, when I change the references, Excel thinks it's helpful to reset all the formats to oftentimes the default uh, rubbish format it gives for your charts, undoing all the effort that you've made to uh, make your charts look nice. So first of all, I'm going to show you the problem that occurs. Then I'm going to show you how to fix it. And along the way, I'll also show you how to build a nice chart like this and use some conditional formatting. So let me first show you how the problem occurs. So if I go and in my chart, select the chart, I'm going to go to my select data option. And let's say I don't want um, the values referring to 2023 anymore. I want 2024. So I'll select that new range. Click OK for Europe and do the same for USA. So I'm going to select the data range for the next year interval. And you'll notice um, it's been quite mild on this one, maybe because that blue was a default color I set, but the red has been changed to orange. Um, and it's rather annoying every time you change the reference to things to have to go back and uh, refill it. And if I had um, things like um, data labels on here as well. It, it resets the formats of the data, any data labels you have and anything relating to those um, bars or lines or whatever chart you've chosen. Excel, when you change the data references, will um, reformat it. So here's how you turn that off. It's one of those <laughs> really annoyingly buried um, Excel options um, buried deep down in your settings. So the first step is to go to the file and right down the bottom you've got options. Um, if you can't see options it will be under more and then options. So click on options. Now there's hundreds of different options under here but most of the time when we're encountering an issue they tend to be on the advanced and unhelpfully they're named in very technical jargon so it's really hard to understand but I'm just going to point to you which ones to switch off. So un under advanced I found it the other day and the advanced tab under the chart section of the advanced tab what you'll probably find is these two boxes ticked. So properties follow chart data point for all new workbooks. So that's complete gobbledygook but under the information tab it helpfully gives you more gobbledygook. <laughs> um, but in any case it's some it's alluding in some way to that oh we yeah, data points and um, for things as they move or change. So what you want to do is switch that off and the equivalent thing in the current workbook switch that off. For some reason, again, Excel allows all these defaults switched on that make your life hell. So those are the things to switch off. So now when I press OK, and this time I'm going to do it the shorthand way rather than go to chart design and select data. Instead, I'm just going to select the data for the series I choose. So when I select a series, you'll see the names, uh, the references are all highlighted. So in terms of the values, let's just uh, change those and the other one as well. I'm going to change those, move those back across and it stays, what you'll find is it stays the same format. So that's how to fix the issue. Now if you want to watch the rest of the video to see how I made this chart and also I'm going to do some conditional formatting here to identify my main products uh, by um, percentage change and rank, including the formulas, then carry on watching. So 
to make this chart um, and a side-by-side -side bar chart is the best way to go when you want to compare two areas for example if you're comparing things you want to compare them side by side if you're comparing um, years um, it's a good idea to have or anything any time scale it's good to have on a line chart but obviously when you've only got a couple of years then that's not really going to work but anyway what I'm going to first do is I'm going to select an area that's got some of my data because it's um, quite tricky adding two different series um, as a default and well let's give it a try so select my data area go to insert go to chart 2d column yeah so as a default if I select all of it you'll see it, um, it's got product A to E repeated um, and I don't want it presented like that I want it um, side by side so what I'm going to do is select one piece of it and insert my 2d column chart here's a little tip if you want it to align to your cells hold down uh, alt as you move it and resize it so for example i want this to align to my cells so next the the um, default format that excel gives for charts is pretty awful the standard things i do uh, is make the text uh, black so it's more um, readable this horrible Calibri I'm going to change it to Arial and in the sidebar I'm going to make the uh, the axis sorry I'm going to make those larger for the sums of money and the products and then I'm going to make everything bold to make it even more readable so that's um, just a first step when you've got the whole chart selected so next under chart design I'm going to go to my select data and this time what well, you'll see I've got my series one which is these bars for product A to E already named I'm going to edit that series just to give it a name and my name's already nicely put there so I don't have to type it out so I'm just referencing that cell or group of cells there so that's uh, my series one is Europe if I want to add a series to compare it to the USA um, I'm going to put the series name there I'm going to choose my values again with this upward arrow bit and I'm going to choose these values within the same year and then click OK now you don't need to change the horizontal axis labels for the second series because it's already aligned it to the first one so that would be unnecessary so I'm just going to click OK so I've got my main data there now what I don't like about the default setting is how far apart um, Excel places the bars so I'm going to right click on any one of the bars and format data series and you'll see the gap width is always 219% randomly it's such a random stupid number but I like it somewhere between 30 and 50 percent depending on what I'm doing um, which makes everything a bit bigger and the overlap um, I want just a thin sliver between them because otherwise it's hard to see that they're grouped according to products so I'm just going to have minus five percent and that gives me a thin sliver between my categories so next um, I'm going to format these aligned to what formats I've used in the table so blue for Europe red for USA so I'm going to go back to home with my um, bars selected this is the Europe one so the blue I want this deep uh, blue very subtle difference but I quite like that color and for USA I'm going to use red the bold red so that's those updated. If you wanted, you can also add um, you can also add data labels um, just by right clicking the bars and adding data labels. By default, it places them on the outside end, but again, by clicking anything in the chart and right clicking it, you'll get um, 
you can format those data labels which will give you the options on the right in terms of where you place them and so on. Now the last thing to do on this chart is I need a, a title. So what I'm going to do is under the chart design tab again, I'm going to add a chart element that I'm missing. I want a chart title and I want it above my chart because uh, that's generally a good place to have a title. So I'm going to call this um, 2023 sales and I'm going to compare Europe, um, as it says on the tin, it's Europe versus uh, USA by product. And to save me having a legend on that table, uh, adding extra, using up extra space and things, um, I'm oh, by the way, I'm just going to make the title a bit bigger. What you can do is just use intuitive formatting of your title so you don't have to have the whole title the same color. What I'm going to do is select the word Europe and make that blue. Select, double click to select the word USA, make that red. Now my kind of legend is integrated in the title, which is easy to do when you're just comparing two things and it saves you, it just makes your chart look um, neater. And if you want to go the whole hog and have things color congruent, then you might select the data labels and format those the same color as the bars as well, if you're being a real perfectionist. So there we have the chart of that, a nice chart demonstrating visually that table of data. However, if um, you wanted to add some things to the table, so what we'll identify now is I want a conditional format this percent change. And if you have a look at my percent change, um, how to calculate percent change video and percentages video in Excel, you'll see the, I've already done that here. So what you want in terms of calculating the percent change is first of all, calculate the difference between your most recent and the earlier number. So in that case, E4 minus D4, because I want 2024 minus 2023, so that will be £3,000. And then the result of that calculation, which I'll put in brackets to denote I want it as a, to do that first um, altogether, but the result of that I want to divide it by my original number. So what's 3000 as a change from 5000 Well, that's dividing it by the original number. And that is a 60% increase. So that's how you calculate percentages. What I'm going to do next is just highlight my percentages and just use some simple ready-made um, conditional formatting where I'm going to see, I mean, it's quite garish some of these, but a more subtle one might be uh, the green, white, red color scheme. So I've noticed, okay, product A, seems to be my um, high growth product or rising star if you wanted to use a um, BCG marketing matrix. However, product C, um, if I were to do the same on the vol volume, on the amounts, uh, let's do a kind of intensity color scale this time. I'll notice that in Europe, product C is my kind of cash cow. And um, in the US, it's somewhere between product A and product D. And I might be concerned about my product C in Europe because although it's my cash cow, it's reducing year on year. So that's where the color coding can just help emphasize these things. And then finally, it's quite handy to identify um, the rank of things. Um, so I've just put a rank formula in here. So to do that, you just type uh, equals rank for the rank function. Now the number is the number you want ranked. So I want that number ranked. And then the reference is the range you want it ranked within. So I'm going to select the whole range here. But um, before I press enter, I want to set that range in stone so it doesn't move with my when I copy this formula down. So to do that you just type a dollar sign in front of each references, each row and column 
reference, i.e. the letter and the number denoting the cell. So I'm going to keep that range fixed so it will always refer to D4 and D13, but when I copy things down, I'll just move this out of the way a minute, by selecting in the bottom right of a cell I can drag that formula down. So although the range is set, you'll notice up here the uh, number, the cell, sorry, of the ranked reference is changing each time. So that just saves me having to type out the formula again and again. So there you go. That's a, a, a kind of some bonus extras in that video about charts and formatting, calculating percentage and rank and even building a chart. But the main thrust, as I mentioned earlier in this video, was to sort out that annoying setting that changes your format of your chart when you reference new data in your chart. Um, so I hope you found that helpful. Give us a, a thumbs up and um, comment below if you found it helpful. Please share uh, with others um, and I'll speak to you again soon for another excel at the office.com video.